Hey, it's the Bet Las Vegas and Odyssey Sports in Las Vegas. Do me a favor. Smell the air. You can feel it in the air. We are getting closer and closer to WrestleMania 39, of course, happening next door in Los Angeles. And joining us right now is a Trailblazers with so many accolades. We'll name a few WWE Hall of Famer, current WWE Women's Tag Team Champion. Lita joins us. She will also be a part of a es WWE rivals this Sunday night as they focus on the legendary Lita interest rivalry. And Lita, I know you're on your press run, so thank you so much for the time. Um, and as we start off, you've had a pretty interesting week that involves a championship and now a WrestleMania match. So I have to ask you, four or five months ago, did you even think this would be possible? Was not on my radar <laughs> in the most remote possibility. And that is exactly when opportunities come like this and, and and yet somehow i have like yet to just stay in the ring and training constantly because uh i guess yeah if you if you don't think about it it will happen if you stay prepared that's that's a way to not get the call so hey if you're ready you don't have to get ready you know what i'm saying um and look i i do want to focus on your iconic rivalry with Trish Stratus because it's so important to wrestling and of course women's wrestling and of course perfect timing International Women's History Day but if I could get super specific with you um of course you guys were the first women to headline a Monday Night Raw um you guys closed it out can you just talk me through at the end of the match at the end of the show walking through the curtain backstage and like how that was was everybody clapping did you have conversations with anyone what were your emotions walking backstage after the match uh, you actually just brought me back to that moment i hadn't really thought about it in a while and i kind of got a little a little choked up about it um i you know so first of all all, all day I kept going, they're going to change it. They're going to change it. It's going to, they're saying we're in the main event, but they're going to change it. So don't get too excited being able to go out there. I was just so glad, you know, like it didn't change. We get to go out there. I felt when we closed the show, I was like, I think we, I think we did okay. And then I go through the curtain and there's like my locker room, my Pete, like my, my friends, my coworkers, my, our producers and like, clapping for us and it's like it, it was just such a I mean and, and that's honestly like that part of it is one of the huge reasons that match means so much to me it's it's not for just what we did out in the ring but it was the fact that the office trusted us to have that spot the fact that our co-workers acknowledged that we deserved that spot um like that's the part that like I mean I felt good before but it's like where you're like i'm a wrestler like, like i'm not playing wrestling i'm not doing i'm not doing moves i'm working like i'm in the club like i do feel like it was that that moment where i'm like these are my people <laughs> yeah and the the respect of everyone else and, and of course i mean we're still talking about it today it was almost 20 years ago and if i could ask you um obviously there's a lot of dynamics uh into this rivalry and what made it so great but when you talk about the chemistry between you two, and obviously you guys still have a good friendship to this day, what's the one thing you could point to that kind of created the magic? I think it is, which we figured this out on day one, we had the same goal. We both got in pretty quickly <laughs> in our journey once setting our sights on wanting to be in the WWE, knowing how rich the talent was there. And we both knew we were in the stages that we were hired. We had potential, but we were still really green. And we knew that we're like, we want to be the best we can possibly be and fast track ourselves to be up to the level of talent that, that is here. So we, we had that in common, yet we came from very different places. We looked very different. So we were kind of became the perfect complements to each other being that, that yin and yang, but with the same goal. So we wanted to get to the same place with different visions, and it really just made for the perfect story. No, honestly, and if I could really quick, what's the one thing that fans would be surprised about Trish that they wouldn't know, just that, whether behind the scenes or in the friendship? Like, what's the one thing you would say? <clears throat> uh, I think they would be surprised. Let's see. Um, God, I don't know. We We really are. It's funny. So I'm very much, maybe they would be surprised about this. 
one of the reasons, because you look at us and we wouldn't necessarily think we'd be as tight because we are very different. Yeah, in the cafeteria, uh, I don't picture you guys in the same table eating lunch. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> right, right. But the funny thing is, is a lot of times when I say, oh, I like this or I do this, she always says, oh, Ron does that, like her husband. So it's always, and her husband, her and her husband are very yin and yang. And it's almost like I'm her surrogate uh, partner right there. And the fact that I'm different, it complements each other. And so I think it's like, so I'm also close with her husband, right? And so it's, it's like, uh, because we are more similar. And then, and so I think it's just, the energy just works really well. And it's one of those things, like when you see it together, you get it. You're like, oh, now I get why they're so tight. But if you just were looking at us individually, you wouldn't think that we would gel the way we do. And, you know, one of the things I love about this job is with so many people that we get to talk to um, are trailblazers like yourself. But when you really think about it, you know, you said it when I asked you about Trish and, and that main event match of how you two guys just wanted to be wrestlers. You wanted to prove yourselves and you love this. And when you're on that path of, of making that happen, you don't realize that you are a trailblazer and everything that comes with that and the admiration and, and now the legendary status and becoming a hall of famer. I'm just wondering, and I'm curious, do you, are you used to now like people coming up to you, whether it's in the locker room or just fans, like some of the appreciation and nice things that they say the like, Hey, I'm a wrestler because I saw you do all these things and it let me know that I could do it too. Yeah. So it's interesting. I don't feel like I even took a moment to reflect on my career until I, I was inducted in the hall of fame because I was so inundated with getting to the next town, crossing the next thing off the list when I was active. And then when I retired, I, I needed to take a break from wrestling. I needed to completely put it out of my mind. So I wasn't thinking about my career either. And then when I was inducted into the Hall of Fame, I remember putting out a, a post saying, what were your favorite moments from my career as I'm thinking about my, and there are all of these moments that I was like, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, wait. Yeah. Me and Edge teamed up with Randy Orton for a while. Oh, wait. There's like, you know, and there's just all of these things that made me for the first time go, ah, oh, it's so cool stuff, you know? And then, um, so I think like from, from about Hall of Fame to now, I will say it never gets old. I am used to it, but I do appreciate it. Every time someone tells me a story about when they were a kid or a moment that just sticks out to them. And it could be the smallest thing. Like you were wearing this shirt. Do you know where you got it? I'm like, don't even know what you're talking about, but I love <laughs> you can still picture that in your head because it's burned into your childhood. I do have to say Lita, when the actual physical WWE hall of fame is built on your bus, it needs to say Lita. I did some cool stuff in my career. Um, <laughs> and before we get into a speed round, uh, my last big question for you is, you know, after you've retired, you know, we've gone through this women's revolution, which has included the evolution pay-per-view, which we need another one. Uh, the women's Royal Rumbles, the main eventing of WrestleMania is hell in the cell matches. I I'm curious if you, as you've seen all these women, you know, take these steps has there been a moment in particular that you've watched and you're at home just kind of in awe and, you know, kind of emotional? Yeah. So I remember, I remember when the first elimination chamber happened, like I remember the guys like touching the, the chains are, are like laced differently than, than in the steel, like the hell in a cell match. And I remember like that they were like, Oh man, like they didn't think the structure through when they built it. Like we got to, crash into this and everything and I remember the very first money in the bank match and how excited the guys were to to have a new match you know to look forward to with a new element so when I started seeing things like women's elimination chamber matches women's uh the money in the bank you know um those are things that I'm like I won't say jealous, but like, wow, like, like it does make me be like, Hey, I want to, I want to do that. But also it, it, like, I get extra stoked on those nights watching them get to even still, like, I know we've had multiple money in the bank matches for the women and, and elimination chambers, but I really appreciate them more because we just had to, we felt we had to quietly look from the sidelines and it, it, we would have been laughed out of the building if we had suggested that well, like, what if we have one of those next year, you know? 
Yeah, and look, before we we close this out um, and get into our speed round, let me get the plugs in real quick. This Sunday, WWE on A&E, WWE Rivals, focusing on Trish Stratus and Lita. WrestleMania, of course, April 1st and 2nd in Los Angeles. And also, we get the second to last SmackDown here in Las Vegas. That is going to be yep. March 24th. Go get your tickets, MGM Grand Garden Arena. Lita, are you prepared to enter the speed round? Let's go. It's not as daunting as an elimination chamber, I promise you. Okay, <laughs> since it is International Women's Day, which woman is the most badass in the history of the WWE, in your opinion? China. There it is. Uh, words of advice that you would give women trying to break into the business? Be yourself. Craziest place you've wrestled? Oh, man. Craziest place I've wrestled. Saudi Arabia? That was pretty damn crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, have you ever been starstruck? Uh yes. Three times. Are you ready for it? Let's do it. Uh so there there was a woman in a punk band called the Luna Chicks. I met her and just started crying when I tried to talk to her and tell her how cool I thought she was. Um Weird Al Yankovic. Big Legend. fan. <laughs> Big fan. I just kind of was like, I just couldn't really talk talk to him too much. It wasn't, there was like a mild one. Paul Rubens lost my mind. Like, I didn't think I had the thing that made you starstruck until I met him. And I was like mortified. And I and I've like had fans meet me. They're like, oh my God, I'm sorry. I feel weird. And I was just like, all right, whatever, you weirdo. And then after that happened, I'm like, now I'm like so empathetic. I'm like, don't worry. I get it. I turned into 12 year old me. I met Paul Rubens. Like, uh, like, don't worry. I hear you. Not, right. not a speed round answer, but I had to, I had to go through. No, it. no, we appreciate the stories. We'll close them out with two more. Uh, your first big check that you remember getting from wrestling. What was your first big purchase? Um, I'm, I'm so frugal like but i would say actually a maybe like a pinball machine i bought an adam's family pinball machine okay that is lit that is dope and then my last question my son is four and a half years old sire i love you when you're watching this just realize i'm talking to you i'm talking about you to a legend right now but he hasn't been to a wwe event yet of course mm -hmm. i just said it mgm grand garden arena march 24th smackdown on fox is it time to bring my son into the wwe universe officially all right, so here's what I would say. It's a little more of a legit answer than you might be prepared for. Yes, but just know you might have to go home 30 minutes into the show because Sire is overstimulated and maybe not quite like down. And if you're ready to do that, cool. Maybe you guys can have a little bit of a bonding moment. You don't know, it could go the other way. But there is a lot of action that um, could be pretty polarizing. I've seen kids just get overwhelmed because they're just like losing their losing their mind. Thank you for the parenting advice. The WrestleMania sign will be in the building too. We'll, we'll, we'll test it out and see what happens. But Lita, uh, I can't thank you enough for everything that you put like, into this. You might this just have to turn that car around when you're like, all right, one more thing. I'm you're like, damn it, we're not going to the beach now. So I do have Bluey <laughs> on my phone, so I could just put okay. that on real quick, and then it'll be chilled Hand it out. over, yeah. Put a blanket <laughs> over his head. Be like, you're just over here. I'll be cheering for my girl. <laughs> there it is. Uh, Lita, yo, thank you so much for the time and everything that you put into the business and making me such a big fan. I appreciate it, Lita. Thank you. Cool. Thanks for your time. Have a good one. See you in Vegas.